して火を焚こうなよ。はい Welcome back to Cruising as Crew. I am here with Andy today, who is crew staff on board. And he、Sorry. is gonna. <laughs> I say it.、Oh, see, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, monkeys live in Gibraltar. Carry on. <laughs> monkeys live in Gibraltar? What's that? I'll calm you down. Hi, sailors. Welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy, and today I am here with Andy, who is crew staff on board cruise ships, and he is going to be answering, if he can stop laughing, all of our questions about the job. What was your job on board when you worked on cruise ships? I was in the entertainment department, working as either a host, senior host.、Um... Wait, hang on, were you crew staff or a host? It's the same thing. Oh, yeah,、okay. it's, it's a weird one. It's、right. every company advertises it so differently because they kind of say you can be crew staff or entertainment host or just entertainment. They might even advertise it as compare. Okay. I think so. As all of、yeah. those things, what did <laughs> it? Everything. What did it include? What was? What did you actually do? What was your job day to day? We did quite a lot of activities. So it was like running carpet bowls. Have heard of that one? Oh, so、no. much fun! Oh, it's amazing. <laughs>、really? You bowl a basically it's, it's bowls, but you do it on a ship that's moving that disappears to the left or the right. Yeah, so like carpet bowls, shuffleboard. You do your external activities, so shuffleboard, deck coits, archery on some ships. You do a lot of of sailor ways. They may have pool or darts outside as well.、Um, poolside activities as well, like hosting quizzes outside at the pool. If it's hot enough, it's gorgeous to do it outside, like music quizzes,、um, bingo. Love a bit of bingo.、Right. Love it when Doris doesn't get the rumble that she <laughs> wants. Absolutely brilliant. In the daytime, there's specific daytime activities, and in the evening, it's a lot of socialising. It's a lot of going around and speaking to people, welcoming people to the show, and. You might even be in charge of the show that night, so you might be hosting and comparing the show, bringing people on and off the stage,、uh, which is always a good laugh. Music for dancing, so you'd actually put on music for people to dance to, like do waltzes,、um, cha cha, cha cha slide. That's not a dance, sorry. Cha cha, cha cha, cha cha slide. Yeah, cha cha. I don't know why I thought cha cha slide. Apparently, that's my main thing. <laughs> But if you can think of it, you'll do it. Activity events are very much, you know, the guests need to be entertained twenty four seven. So, what made you decide to do that job on board? I saw a friend of mine was doing youth hosting and working with children on board one of the ships in, during specific seasons on some ships because they don't have kids on all the time. Got a message from her saying that I need a host for the children. Do you want to come on board? I said, Yeah, go for it. So, took some time off work at the time, which was at the time KFC. So、oh. fantastic! Oh, oh. I love a bit of finger licking, good chicken. <laughs> awesome. Went and did the two weeks on board as a youth host and spoke to the entertainment manager at the time, and they said, "Oh yeah, you'd be right for the job if you want it." I applied. I was too young because you need to be 21、okay. um, to do the hosting. So when I turned 21, I got an email、uh, saying we'd like an interview. Then had this interview for Fred Olsen as a host,、yeah. and then got into oh yeah, went into the hosting, and then from there it just kind of escalated. Really, I've gone on to do you know comparing at home on ships, singing on ships at home. Do you think you normally have to have some kind of land experience, like hosting experience, to be able to come through stuff? <laughs> I'm sorry. Land experience. <laughs> Loving it. I think it helps in some ways. Like I, a lot of the people I worked with had either worked, for instance, for your land-based opportunities, where are Butlins and Pontins, and they're blue coats, they're red coats, because you can kind of walk in knowing what's expected of you. Right. I knew I could talk to people and I could get on with it, and I knew I'm, I'm quite a quick learner. It's, it's not hard to pick up how to play carpet bowls. You don't need the experience. It does help, but if you're starting out, then it's quite good to start on a cruise ship. You're starting out quite high. Cruise ships are really well regarded. It can open so many doors as well. It can really open so many doors, especially if you've got land experience. So I'd recommend people get it first before going onto ships, but it won't hinder you if you don't. Okay. If someone is watching this and they want to apply to be crew staff on a cruise ship, do you know how they would apply? Yeah, just don't do it. What? You just said, <laughs> yeah, it's really good to do it. Just, just don't do it. Don't do it.、Um, yeah. So <laughs> flying onto cruise ships are different because、um, you can do it pretty much online. So the majority of it is on your normal places that you might find it. I don't know if Spotlight do it, which is like a, an entertainment. Uh, like place where you go and get jobs, but the way I would go about it is just literally look up the name of cruise companies and then go through that cruise company in particular. Scroll to the bottom, find careers, click on entertainment host, compare whatever they advertise it as, and go through there. I did that and it went quite well. It took a while for a few of them 
Uh, but it's one of them where you just have to wait till the opportunity is there. Like, yeah. There's only so many shifts and so many positions. How long after applying did you have to wait to have an interview? Yeah, I think I applied P&O. I applied in the like, the July and didn't get an interview till the May. Oh. So it's quite a, oh. it can be wow. quite a long process. Again, it's just availability. But then if you look at other companies, I was on board the ship in about two weeks, but it's one of them where it can take quite a while or it can be a week. A week, okay. Just depends. Did you receive any training <laughs> prior to getting on board? Right. <laughs> or did you just... <laughs> did you receive... As soon as I got on board, I got given a buddy. Um, oh. When I first... Yeah, I know. He was so cute as well. <laughs> uh, good. And I had him for about a week and then got told, yeah, go on. God, you're fine. Enjoy. Don't annoy anybody. You will always get a buddy. They will not throw you in the deep end. Uh, they will definitely look after you as much as possible before you go and actually play with the, play with the guests. That is horrible. Before you go and work with the guests. <laughs> Do not play with the guests. That's not allowed. That is not allowed on a ship. <laughs> Why did you decide to work on cruise ships? And was it what you expected when you got on board? Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, what a question! Uh, <laughs> the big draw for me was the experience that you're going to grab. Your job is to make people smile. Yeah, like it's it's such a good job. It's so rewarding, and the fact that I'll be able to say in 20, 30 years time when I'm old and senile, I love how I've just said 20, 30 years. 20 time, years, years my like, shit. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, apparently I'm only living till thirty. The way I'm right. uh, so. <laughs> So it's just like I can look back and go, look what I managed to do in my early 20s and gain such an experience that is really cool. And I, I, I found so many good people on board. And I, crew wise, I've never met a bunch of people that are so different that you would never normally talk yeah. to. Yeah. I've got so many good memories from it. It was so good. It was amazing. As much as people will probably say different about me where they'll go, eh, he started to hate it towards the end sort of thing. I think everyone starts to hate it at the end of every single contract. Like, oh, no, no matter, no, but no matter like how good your contract has been, by that last month, whether you, you're on a four month contract, a six month, a nine month, you're like, get me off this ship. Like, <laughs> So, do you get your uniform provided? Oh, so you get your uniform. Uh, the majority of the time with the ships, you will get a pair of shorts or two, if you're lucky. You will get two pairs of daytime trousers. Mm -hmm. uh, you may get shoes, depends on the company. You get polo tops. Mm -hmm. You need them for the P&O, because you do a lot of sailorways, and you will sweat. You will sweat during yeah. the sailorways. So you'll get these polo tops for them. Uh, you'll get given shirts for the evening wear. You'll get given, uh, for ladies, you get given a suit, uh, a suit with a cravat. Mm -hmm. And the suit can be worn either with skirt they give you or with trousers that they'll give you. And then for the gents, they'll get given a suit with a tie. That's pretty much it on that one. For the rest of it, you do get the opportunity to bring your own stuff because there are formalised on board. Yeah, so gentlemen, bring your tuxedos or just bring what I did, which was the lazy thing. Just use the company suit and buy a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> and ladies, bring, just bring the glam. Bring the glam. Bring the glam. Bring the glam. Bring Bring the the glam. glam. Um, yeah, you, it's, it's a chance for you to wear like a formal dress as well. So like, if you want to wear a formal dress, that is a good one. Like your manager is quite a good manager as well. They'll say, just wear what you want, but make sure it's smart. So bring yourself a couple of suits, make yourself look presentable so that you can go out on stage. Do not wear jeans. I know there's a new phase with the whole jeans with the waistcoat. Do not wear jeans on a cruise ship. You're on a cruise ship. You're not on a bloody park bench. All right, like, <laughs> look smart. I know. Uh, the only thing I can think of apparently. You're on a cruise <laughs> ship. You're not on a park bench. You're not on a park bench. <laughs> yeah, where just be smart. It, the way you used to get taught for me was you are the celebrity of the ship. People know who you are, so make sure you look the part all the time, and make sure that you present yourself in a way that you'd want people to go, "Oh wow, look what they're wearing tonight." But yeah, just yeah, you, know, you get most of the majority of your uniform given to you, but bring some stuff. Does the company pay for your like medical, your C1D visa, your Siemens book, or do you pay for that yourself? I still laugh at Siemens book. I'm such a child. Um, it's just the fact it's called a Siemens discharge book. Who decided that was the name? <laughs> Someone literally looked and went, yes, this is what we're going to do. Or they were drunk and just went, yeah, Siemens discharge. This sounds great. But yes, they are all. You can claim all of it back. You can claim all of your discharge back, okay? Uh, oh, so you can God. claim everything back, all right? If you need to do anything that requires you to get on the ship, then the chances are you can send it off to the company and they will reimburse you. What was your first day like on your first ever cruise ship? Oh, uh, it was good fun. It was good. It's nerve-wracking. It's so nerve-wracking because you walk on your like, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> and I don't know where I am. 
what do you mean my cabin's downstairs? There isn't a downstairs from here. Yes, there is. Oh my God, I'm by the engine room. So when I walked on, I was shown to my cabin. You get shown around, you have to do all your familiarization and you have to crack on with them. And if you've ever done a ship before, it's all right. But if you haven't, you're there like, what do you mean I've got to know about a fire extinguisher? Why have I got to know about this watertight door? You do get a bit nervous, but you, the nerves settle because if you've got a good team around you, they're very, they will molly hollow you for a little while and it's nice because you need it because it's such a different world but yeah my first day it was very very good what is a normal embarkation day like for crew staff uh, during embarkation day you will either be on the embark or the debark so you'll either be disembarking the guests that have just been on for that particular cruise saying goodbye so great to see you oh yeah thank you and then forgetting their names in 30 seconds <laughs> you may have the afternoon off then and you can relax what until... time would you start if you were doing debark so I would normally be up about 7 and then start working probably about 7.30, get given a radio and then crack on with it there. That would be the normal starting day for debark. But then some debarkations don't start until later because some ships don't get in until the afternoon and so that's back in the guests in the afternoon. But yeah, your earliest that you'll start is probably about 7, 7.30 for your debarkation. Unless you're running it, then you might be up about 6. And then, but then you'll normally work to about probably 11, 12. Okay, and then you have the afternoon off. Yeah, and then embarkation is exactly the same. So in the embarkation, you'll have the morning off, and then, or whenever, you'll have the disembarkation off, basically, and yeah. then you'll start doing embark. Because with embark, you're not just welcoming the guests on board, but you're trying to show them where their cabin is. So you need to know the layout of the ship, pretty much, to a T. But yeah, that's the embarkation, really. And the other thing for the embarkation is to push the guests in a nice way to have a photo. It sounds really strange, but it's all about revenue straight away. Like the, the whole idea behind the entertainment department, which we got pushed quite a lot, is to build revenue for other sectors. So if we're doing a show somewhere, it's so that the bar can make the money in that area. You've got to be switched on from moment go, which is why in the morning, if you're not doing a disembarkation, you're having time off. A lot of us used to just sleep and just prep for that afternoon and be like, okay, right, I'm, I'm ready now. I can go for it. I can start doing what i need to do in the evening when the ship has set sail or is setting sail i assume you start doing activities straight away yeah pretty much a lot of the time by the time the ship sails it's about 4 35 o'clock and a lot of the crew staff then have about a two-hour break to yeah. get your food you know you get your, you know, your dinner and hope that it's not oxtail or something <laughs> um, fish head then soup. you go fish head soup a little bit of fish head soup especially when the eyes are looking at you uh, <laughs> You'll start doing your evening activities, which is pretty much your quizzes, hosting the shows, welcoming people to shows, socialise, socialise, please socialise, just walk around and talk to guests, because on that first night you're trying to make an impression. What's a normal sea day like for crew staff? Horrible. It's so long. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> Atlantic crossing, seven days. I've never wanted to jump overboard in my life so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, it's not that bad, actually. It's quite good. You might start at nine o'clock in the morning, but then you might start at 11 o'clock in the morning. You'll probably have either one or two activities in the morning, then one or two activities in the afternoon, and then it'll lead into the evening. That's how it used to work. So you could, I mean, you could do like one activity and then have like two hours in between to just chill and then another activity. Oh, and Yeah, as well as keeping the guests entertained got to remember you're quite a big part of it and it's all about your mental health on board and keeping yourself going you will be busy you won't realize it but you will be busy and then i, I suppose it depends on the cruise lines but i think piano was very much like activities like they would look after bowls and they would look after bingo or various other activities through the day yeah but when i was on royal caribbean like the cruise staff were they were doing like shows you know they were basically another cast you know, they yep. were dressing up and they were doing shows. and that, So I, I definitely think, depending on the cruise line, will depend on how busy you are. Like, and obviously, like, uh, I suppose Royal to... Caribbean has more, like, young adults, so they need to be entertained differently to how the 80-year-olds need to be entertained on... Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But you've got to remember, the other thing is, you're saying, no, I'm not really working that much during the day. I might do four hours during the day. But then you're working four hours in the night. And from 9am till midnight is your working hours. Right. So it's quite heavy. And sometimes it might be past midnight because you're doing DJ. So you'll be on the evening DJ set where you just play music uh, in the club for the people to go and dance to and such. So you might be working quite long hours. So what would you be doing in the evening? So you say DJing. What else? Uh, so you're hosting the shows and everything and as well. Right. So you're doing your welcoming guests, doing your quizzes, doing all this and that. Um socializing massively but you might start at like half past seven and you won't finish till maybe okay. midnight right so although you get kind of a lot of little breaks throughout the day your yeah. day can actually be quite long 
Is that what you're saying? Really, really long. You, I recommend taking naps in a tiny gap. Yeah. Try and get that in because it will just keep you going for the rest of the night. Yeah. And the other thing is as well, when you finish, you never finish. As soon as you walk away from an, an activity, you're still being talked to by people that know you. And you're like, oh, okay, so I'm still... I think once I took two hours to get back to the manager's room because I was just talking to people. <laughs> I was like, oh, Shit, yeah. it's taking me quite a while. And they were like, oh, you got this activity at three. I'm like, what time is it? Oh, it's two. Oh, damn it. With that, you then look and go, okay, I finished. It's one o'clock in the morning. I finally got downstairs. Shall I go to bed? No, because I'm stupid. I'm going to go to the bar and have a few more drinks with the guys oh, to just go and relax. Which is then why you're more knackered because then you've got to start again at nine o'clock the next morning. And you're like, oh... Why yeah. did I stay until four? Like, you, you're just consistently on the go. Your Atlantic crossings will be the worst. It is fun, though. It is a good laugh, because in the end, you're like, day 50 on the Big Brother <laughs> ship. <laughs> so what is a port day like? Um, so they used to go out and just, you'd go and enjoy the port. Like, especially if it's a new port, everybody would be like, oh, I want to get off, I want to go and see it. But there will be always one entertainer that has to stay on and conduct the daily activities just in case people don't want to get off the ship or yeah. can't get off the ship. You've got to remember it's accessibility for the guests as well. Some guests literally love being on a ship and just cruising on the ship yeah. and don't really care about the port. So you will end up doing your jobs during the day. There may be one person, one person, but you've got to stick around and give out the prize at the end of it. Mm -hmm. But it's that may be a port day. If not, you can go out, explore the port, you can go and have a drink with your friends. But your port days, you can go and enjoy and go and look around. Like, you see so many cool places. Or sign up for the excursions. Because yeah. you can go and sign up and then do them. You'll be with guests all day. But to be honest with you, they're so induced with this excursion that you're even there. And you're like, oh, my God, look at this. So, yeah, you can do all sorts. Just go and enjoy it. And what about the evenings when the ship sets sail? You're back on duty? Yep, yeah, same again. Then it'll be the same evening once then. It, what you get used to as a host is routine. It is very much, here's your morning, here's your afternoon, here's your evening. So your evening will be exactly the same. You do your quizzes you'll do your shows you'll do your spotlight you'll do your music for dancing you'll do this you'll do that it's just the same stuff you've just got to remember to bring the energy each time because when you get new guests on board you can't just go oh here we go again it's yeah. like oh okay we need to help them enjoy it because they're new to this like oh come on the dance floor for a waltz or, yeah. or a cha-cha slide apparently but you know like whatever <laughs> Yeah, and just host the shows if you've never hosted them before, sort of thing. Like, just yeah. make it new. Make it seem new. As crew staff, are you considered officer status? So, do you get I your don't... own cabin? Do you get to eat in the officer's mess? Do you, like, what what perks do you get as an officer? Actually, it's not... You uh, are an officer. What perks do you get as an officer? As a junior host, you will share a cabin. You would always have the officer status to go into the officer's mess. Mm -hmm. So, you'd go and eat. Well, they were Better pretty food. much the same. Not yeah, fish head I mean, soup. I'm, yeah, not fish head soup or rice. <laughs> so, of that, you'd be able to go into the wardy as well or to the officer's drinking place, yep. or however they call it. After your first contract, do you get to choose what ship you go on or do you just go where the company sends you? Company sends you, pretty much. Um, okay. the, you will normally get like a, a scheduled rotor. So, mm -hmm. I knew what ship I was on for P&O like a year and a half in advance. So there's one of them where you kind of get told, okay, you're on this one till here, this one till here. You can request ships. To say you've got friends on another ship or you've got a partner on another ship or anything, you can request it, but it's never going to be certain that you'll get it. Can I ask about your salary as crew staff? Or no, would you prefer... No, not at all. That's fine. <laughs> no, I'm, jo I'm joking. Um, again, company dependent. It would be in the region starting salary was about 1200 Okay. per month. Again, company dependent. Some of them pay you while you're off, some of them don't. So the reason I'm saying 1200 a month is because for p and I think I was on about 1500 1600 but I wasn't paid while I was off. Right. So it kind of made up for the month that I was off or two months that I was off. Mm. Whereas with Fred Alston, you were paid year-round. Oh, okay, that's good. But what was yeah. the salary when you were on Fred? That was twelve. That was 1200 Oh, right, okay. How long would you have on vacation normally? <laughs> it depended. Again, mm -hmm. you would normally be told what your contracts were. So for Fred Olsen, it was four on, one off. Yeah. So that's months. And then for P&O, you got offered, when I first started, four on, two off, or six on, two off. What would you say the top three skills are that you need to be a good crew staff member? You've got to have a good, you've got to be approachable. You've got to be able to hold a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's going to sound really stupid, like, but just being able to be yourself. Okay. Like not not being afraid to kind of 
be you because you will fall into a character like I said earlier but you will realise quickly if that character doesn't work but that's the main thing I'll say is just be yourself and let yourself shine through have your own personality don't try and copy anyone because it will never work mm. and, and it'll get quite exhausting will... I mean if you've got a yeah character... it will yeah. it will uh, you will look at others and you'll go oh my god they are awesome they are so good I want to be like them yeah. as much as that's good don't do it pick up on things that they do well and bring that into the way you work but never try to be like someone because you, you'll fail you, you will fail just bring your own game to it and you will be loved for the way that you do it like people used to take the mickey out of me just because of the way I used to play it and it, it, it worked for me but others would try and copy the managers and it wouldn't work so well for them so yeah I tried it and it didn't work for me, so just be yourself. Honestly, just be yourself. It's the best way to be and just learn from mistakes. You will make many. Just learn from them. Okay. So, Andy, what is your favourite and least favourite thing about being crew staff? Favourite thing is just being able to be funny. Like, being able to make people laugh. I used to love doing it. I used to just take the mickey and it used to be so much fun. Yeah. That is my favourite part. Like, seeing people giggle and have a, being able to have fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the one. The thing that I hate is when people take it too seriously. Oh, the crew members? Re- crew members and guests. Okay. You can just tell the people that are stuck and they're just like, they're not there to have fun anymore. Yeah. And you're like, oh, come on, just have fun. Like, loosen no, up. No one cares. Yeah, loosen up, baby. Like, all that stuff. But yeah, no, I think that used to annoy me quite a lot. It used to be just, you'd sit there and just be like, Come on, like, what are we moaning about? Like, yeah. we're in a bubble. No one cares. And then what is your favourite and least favourite thing about living on a cruise ship? I'll say my least favourite first. Okay. My least favourite is the fact that you're stuck. You are stuck. And it's... Um, on a ship? Yeah. What, my hang on, but what, what do you mean you're stuck? What do you mean by you're stuck? Well, it's just like, you're kind of, you're in this little bubble and you forget what's outside. Right. Like, and you kind of... You, you lose track of what's going on. Like, this is your bubble now. Like, I need to get that. I'm so sorry. That is amazing. <laughs> I don't know if people can see that. That's a huge I mean, Thornton's box. I, I can. This is now part of the interview. I can this do. is part of the interview. Let's see what you've got from Thornton's. Yeah, so, so, crew staff is great. All you need to know, crew staff's fine. <laughs> Look what we got. Oh my god, you've got an advent calendar! It's got your name on it! That's amazing. I will need to find out where this has come from. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of paper. (laughs) That is possibly why the box is so big. The best bit about it is the people. (laughs) (laughs) I've met so many cool people on board the ship, and that's guests and crew. I think I've made best mates off of it that I'll keep for ages. And then the job's great. I'll give them that. The job is great. The crew staff job is phenomenal. If you get that job, you're a lucky, lucky person. Yeah. But it's such a good way to meet so many cool people. And you just, you, you'll get more from it than you'll ever dream you could get from it. So, yeah, yeah I think people, people's my way in more. Brilliant. Well, you have answered all of my questions. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Andy, stop laughing. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, I got it, I got it. Thank you very much everybody for watching this video. Lucy couldn't do it because she's laughing too much, so I thought the actual entertainment host should probably do the outro. <laughs> right. Subscribe to her channel. All right, thank you guys. See you later. Bye. <laughs>